a protest is going on in Telangana that has not been reported much in national mainstream media. It was reported in some local Telugu channels, but not much information is there about these protests. So what are these people protesting against? They are opposing an Indian Navy VLF radar station project in the Damagundam forests in Vikarabad, Telangana. But why protest against a naval station? Are these protests organic or there are some vested interest behind them? And more importantly, why does the Navy want a radar station deep inside these forests, more than 300 km away from the coast? What are they going to do there? Let's find out. It's going to be interesting. Hello guys, I am Saurav and welcome to The Ark. Dhamagundam, if you see here, is a forested area near Pudur village in Vikarabad district of Telangana. It's about 75 km away from Hyderabad and more than 300 km away from the coast. In January this year, the Telangana government signed the agreement with the Indian Navy for transfer of 1,174 hectares or about 2,900 acres of forest land under Dhamagundam Reserve Forest. A township will also be developed here with all the necessary amenities. More than 600 naval personnel will work in the naval station. And the project is expected to be completed by 2027. On 22nd September, a protest named Hashtag Save Damagundam started at Dharna Chok Indira Park in Hyderabad. Journalists, environmentalists, politicians, students and civilians assembled here protesting against the naval station. The protesters claim over 12 lakh trees will be felled for the project. With the cutting down of the trees, the CO2 levels will rise and it will also adversely impact the biodiversity of the region. It will also affect livelihood of tribal people and people engaged in cattle grazing and farming. The forest also houses three crucial rivers, Isa, Kagna, and the source of Musi River. The protesters have also pointed out the health risks associated with exposure to very low frequency electromagnetic fields. There are some reports that suggest health hazards like Alzheimer's, skin disease, etc. may be caused due to prolonged exposure to VLF. Protests are already ongoing. And more protests are planned in the future. But it has taken a political turn with political parties jumping in. The Navy and the other government authorities on the other hand have dismissed these claims. The Telangana PCCF refuted the claim that 12 lakh trees would be removed. He clarified that only 48% of the earmarked forest land will be utilized for construction. And within that, only the required number of trees will be cleared for the radar station. According to the Forest Advisory Authority, about 1.9 lakh trees will be removed for the project. And to compensate this, about 17.5 lakh trees will be planted across different regions. Since 2010, the Indian Navy has been trying to acquire the land here. And in 2014, the Union Forest and Environment Ministry gave all the clearances and approved the Navy's proposals. Authorities have also assured that 500-year-old Sri Ramalingeswara Swami Devasthana Temple in the forest will not be disturbed for the project. And devotees will continue to have access to the temple without any interference. A 27 km long peripheral road will also be constructed for easier access for the locals. The project will also lead to direct and indirect employment of local people. As far as health risks are concerned, the Indian Navy stated that it has more than 33 years of experience operating the first VLF communication station in Tirunelveli, Tamil Nadu, which has been operational since 1990. And no such ill effects on humans as well as flora and fauna have been observed till date. So it's safe to be around VLF stations. But what is VLF? And what is its utility for the Navy? Before getting into the details about the naval station, let's first understand what exactly is VLF. 
charged particles such as electrons and protons when moved create electric and magnetic fields a changing magnetic field will induce a changing electric field and vice versa these two are linked these changing fields form electromagnetic waves or em waves in the 1860s a scottish scientist named james clerk maxwell developed a scientific theory to explain electromagnetic waves he noticed that electrical fields and magnetic fields can couple together to form electromagnetic waves he summarized this relationship between electricity and magnetism into what are now referred to as maxwell's equations and it paved the way for development of current technologies in radio television mobile phones internet gps almost every piece of technology you use today albert einstein described maxwell's work as the most profound and the most fruitful that physics has experienced since the time of newton coming back to electromagnetic waves the energy that the electromagnetic fields propagate is called the electromagnetic radiation and as you know wavelength and frequency are inversely related so more the frequency less the wavelength and vice versa if we distribute the electromagnetic radiation according to frequency or wavelength it's called the electromagnetic spectrum the em spectrum is divided into various ranges depending on their characteristics and also their practical applications as you can see the visible light the part of the em spectrum the human eye is most sensitive to lies in the range of wavelengths between 380 to 760 nanometer or 400 to 790 terahertz in terms of frequency range radio frequency lies typically with frequencies below 300 gigahertz and wavelengths greater than 1 mm the radio frequency band is further divided into vhf hf mf etc the vlf that we are most interested in lies in the ranges of 3 to 30 kilohertz because of their lower frequencies and hence longer wavelengths vlf radio waves can propagate as ground waves following the curvature of the earth as earth's ionosphere layer contains charged particles it can behave as a conductor the earth itself operates as a ground plane and it behaves as a large wave guide the vlf communication systems can communicate over most of the earth and vlf radio waves can also penetrate water to several meters deep which is why they are used to communicate with submerged submarines and that's what we are interested in vlf radio waves can penetrate sea water depths between 20 to 30 meters a submarine operating within these depths can pick up these signals without surfacing and hence without compromising its stealth but because of the very low frequency the vlf antennas have to be quite large and powerful for long range communication and vlf stations therefore require large areas spanning square kilometers this also restricts the submarines from transmitting vlf but a relatively simple antenna is enough for receiving signals hence vlf is always one way from ground to the boat not the other way around secondly because of the narrow bandwidth available voice transmission is not possible only slow data transmission or commands are possible then there is also an elf or extremely low frequency transmission method its frequency range lies between 3 to 300 hertz and it can penetrate sea water to depths of hundreds of meters the ideal operating range for submarines but at such low frequencies and hence wavelengths of thousands of kilometers building an elf transmitter is a huge challenge so what they do is find an area with very low ground conductivity bury two huge electrodes in the ground at different sites and then feed lines to them from a station in the middle in the form of wires on poles as the ground conductivity is poor the current between the electrodes will penetrate deep into the earth essentially using a large part of the globe as an antenna the antenna is not very efficient and has huge power demand for operation but it can transmit almost anywhere on earth there are not many vlf or elf stations on earth but india operates one 
at the INS Kataboman Naval Base near Tirunelveli in Tamil Nadu to communicate with its submarines. As you can see, all VLF stations look alike. On the left is India's INS Kataboman and on the right is Harold Holt Naval Communication Station in Australia. This station in Australia provides VLF radio transmission to the US Navy, Royal Australian Navy and Allied ships and submarines in the Western Pacific Ocean and the Eastern Indian Ocean. Now coming back to our discussion on Damagundam Naval Station. You must be wondering why the Navy selected Damagundam as its VLF station. 300 km away from the coast because of its ideal location. Indian Navy needed a place at a higher altitude, at least 250 feet above sea levels, but away from the coast. Now if you look at its location, you can see it's in the hinterlands in Telangana. But what you don't see, it is strategically located right at the middle of the Indian Peninsula, from where communication is feasible with Navy submarines in the Arabian Sea, Bay of Bengal, and the Indian Ocean. Now why is this naval station so important? India operates nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines. India quietly commissioned the INS Arighat recently, which is the second Arihant class SSBN. As you know, SSBNs are the most critical part of the nuclear triad. The nuclear submarine, once goes out of its base and sails into the sea, it virtually disappears for months carrying out its operations. India has a no-first-use policy with respect to nuclear weapons, but in the event of a war, when attacked with nuclear weapons, it automatically enables India for second strike and retaliation. And that's where the SSBNs come into picture. To transmit commands to the SSBNs, a secure communication medium is extremely critical. And VLF or ELF provides that. It provides India the nuclear deterrence and forms a very important part of India's nuclear doctrine. There is no doubt that cutting up trees adversely impacts the environment. It disturbs the biodiversity, causes increase in temperature and many other issues related to that. And we must make all efforts to avoid that. But national security comes first. There cannot be any compromises on national security. Government authorities must do all that is necessary to address the concerns of people. But project of such strategic importance must go ahead. I hope you liked the video. Please like, share and subscribe the channel for more such interesting videos. Thank you.